Uh, one of the New York metro area's leading cardiovascular experts and clinical experts, the, the director of uh, cardiovascular at Downstate Medical, vice dean of education, uh, and one of the, uh, the leaders in how to de deploy and implement digital health in an actual ecosystem in, in the front lines of, of digital, uh, Dr. Jason Lazar. Dr. Lazar, thank you for joining us today. If we could, if you could just start off with a one minute background. I know it's hard to do with someone like yourself who has many, many hats that he wears. Uh, if you could start off with a little bit of background on yourself. Uh, sure. Uh, I've, um, I'm a practicing cardiologist at SUNY Downstate Medical Center in, Brook, uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we, our mission is to serve an underserved uh, population. Uh, I also wear several hats in that I am the Vice Dean of Education for the College of Medicine, have a research lab, have had the good fortune of uh, embarking on some collaborations with uh, HitLab in the place. Uh, and I would summarize my experience as saying, um, uh, despite those those titles, uh, at the end of the day, I'm a physician who is a digital enthusiast and a digital realist. Exactly. And, and that's really brings us to our really our first topic that we want to cover. You know, this is not just Black History Month. It's also National Heart Health Month. And uh, one of the things we should start off by covering with you, one of the nation's leading heart health experts, is what are some of the key risk factors for heart disease that you're seeing today in your clinic? Well, thank you for the kind words, and it's great to be here um, and celebrate. Today is the, the last day of National Heart Health Month, which uh, raises uh, awareness about cardiovascular uh, disorders and how to prevent them. So it's really a pleasure. I mean, the key risk factors I think uh, most people know, uh, they are uh, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, high cholesterol levels, smoking, diabetes, obesity, and there's also some uh, genetic links. And as I hope to convince the audience, I would venture to say the most underappreciated risk factor is actually a lack of sleep. I'll touch upon each of these very quickly, if that's okay. Please. Hypertension is probably the greatest burden of health uh, worldwide. According to the World Health Organization, more than 30% of people living throughout the world have hypertension. It not only impacts the heart, but also the blood vessels. And uh, this, this effect on blood vessels is, is very important because high blood pressure damages blood vessels, which then go on to create more high blood pressure, more damage, and it becomes this self-perpetuating uh, cycle. Uh, before COVID, uh, and uh, we, uh, we were well on our way to understanding that hypertension is not only a risk factor for uh, heart attack, stroke, and kidney failure, but it is the leading risk factor that is modifiable for dementia as, as well. And it's time to uh, return to understanding that. Quick word on hyperlipidemia. Uh, high cholesterol levels contribute to plaque within the arteries and uh, therefore maintaining uh, normal cholesterol levels are uh, paramount. Smoking, uh, tobacco basically doubles the risk of everything in smokers as compared to non-smokers. And with the legalization of marijuana, I'll point out that there's a growing evidence of literature to suggest that the effects of marijuana on cardiovascular disease are identical to that of tobacco. Diabetes is uh, a simple name for a complex set of disorders uh, that result in high uh, glucose levels because of variable degrees of insulin resistance and or insufficient insulin uh, secretion. Uh, diabetics are somewhere between two to four times more likely to have a, a stroke, heart attack, and diabetes goes hand in hand with obesity. We often call it the diabetes epidemic. And then there are some genetic, genetic history uh, factors that influence and a word about sleep. Poor sleep is associated with multiple chronic diseases, including hypertension, obesity, diabetes, etc. cetera. Uh, years ago, it was uh, bravado to claim to get two, three hours of sleep and to keep going. And now the American Heart Association uh, estimates that adults need seven to nine hours of sleep per night. That's a great outcome. And it's, it's also important, too, one of the things that we've been able to do at the lab, our scientists have studied 
sleep and it's not just the, the time of sleep, right? It's also the quality of sleep because now there's a number of digital health devices that can measure whether you're getting either deep sleep or REM sleep. Really, REM sleep is when the neurons and the synapses are being properly cleansed out and, and can really help you neurologically as well. But um, is, is that, would you consider that to be one of the metrics? It's just not seven to nine hours, but seven to nine hours of quality sleep. Oh, yeah. Quality sleep is major. Uh, the easiest way to measure sleep is through uh, timing. But it turns out that disrupted sleep is even uh, more important. Uh, if you had a choice of sleep in the first four hours of laying down or the last, go for the first. That's when early, slow-wave sleep occurs. That's where most of the restorative processes in the body occur. Uh, and that's actually the time period, two to three hours, where we awaken the most when it is we are awaking. So uh, not only is it the duration of sleep, but the quality and the most frequent uh, issue that disrupts that quality is actually fragmented or disrupted sleep, something that I believe to be very important in the treatment of cardiovascular disease. That's absolutely critical. Absolutely critical. Well, that's great. And in terms of what you're seeing relative to uh, digital technologies and tools that are out there to help people not only monitor their their health using digital technology, but also improve it. What are some of the things that you're seeing really take hold out there in your communities? And then what are some of the things that you'd recommend people use to, to really monitor their heart health? Well, there's a range of digital um, innovations that can be uh, used to monitor and improve uh, heart health. Uh, we could have spent the entire day discussing those. But, you know, with regard to, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, the American Heart Association's Essential Eight. And this used to be the, um, the Lifestyle uh, Seven. Uh, and these are factors that can be done to uh, basically slow biological aging and to prevent heart disease. And, uh, you know, there's no mystery. You know what they are. Maintaining a healthy body weight, maintaining a healthy blood pressure, um, you know, um, uh, treating diabetes if one has it. Uh, so um, one has to ask, uh, can we put all of these different um, um, life's essential eight into uh, one package? And... The American Heart Association actually developed an app to uh, do just that. It helps monitor. It helps. It's free. It helps uh, uh, patients achieve their goals. So, uh, and it really, um, it, it really depicts goals in a smart way. You know, uh, um, you know, uh, smart is an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. And that is what the AHA app uh, does. So that's one basic way. Uh, and the essential eight are scored on a, a scale of zero to 134 questions. It takes just a few minutes and it really is a useful tool. And I use it a lot with patients. Then you get into a whole series of apps, even step counters. I find 80% of my patients have step counters on their phone. They don't even realize it. I point it out, I would say, look, on average, this is what you've done this year. And by measuring it, we can uh, we can actually set goals and have them increase their activity. These are, you know, well-defined measures that um, and interventions that have shown to reduce cardiovascular events. That's amazing. We heard from uh, our... Uh, Absolutely. Uh, that's phenomenal. Yeah, really, really amazing details there. Thank you, Dr. Lazar. And again, thank you for joining us. We know we could probably talk with you for hours on this, but we are at the two o'clock hour and we want to make sure people can get onto their meetings. But again, thank you for joining us, Dr. Lazar. I appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me.